When you have a music where everybody wants to look like you, talk like you, walk like you, sing like you, dress like you, hear something special. He has a lot to say, having been there from the dawn of the local pop scene, but linked at the hip to reggae when Bob was king. Black O'Hara seemed poised for greatness and no one was cooler than Gregory Isaacs. But whether active participant or fly on the wall, playing many roles, all now channeled into Reggae My Life Is. That's the title of it. And really it's a play on of Peter Tosh's Reggae My Life Is. Of course he worked with Peter Tosh too, because as artist and road manager, booking agent, even publicist, MC and cook, multitasking Copeland Forbes has packed in a hell of a lot in his 60 years in the music biz. The book was written in Copeland's voice. And what we want to do is to have takeaways that people, you know, bite-sized pieces of information that people in the digital realm and the digital age are able to extract very easily. For example, when Peter Tosh encounters Mick Jagger and Mick Jagger puts his head at Peter's feet and ask him to chop it off. So his book, ghosted by Clyde Mackenzie, himself a jack of all trades in the reggae industry, is crammed with incident and insight. A catalogue of reggae's rise, the pit stops along the way, and the cast of characters involved. You're dealing with a lot of egos. You're dealing with a lot of people who are very, very different. How do you manage that? What are the skills you need to have to be able to handle so many different people? That's one of the most important questions I've ever asked by anybody in Jamaica. Okay? Everybody overseas asks that because they know exactly what you're talking about. And I look at it, it's very simple, right? Everybody gets up, especially when they're doing a tour with different, different groups, a big tour. Everybody gets up every day with a different attitude, a different mindset, and I know who is miserable and how to deal with some people. Ah. Gregory Isaacs en route to a concert in the UK, putting Forbes' people skills to the test. One of his friends was driving him and he was going like this, but you could smell things in the car. And the next thing I see, a blue light behind me. And I said, the best thing I do, don't let the cops come here, let me jump out. I jump out and you, know, you guys, are, are you okay? You going from side to side, brother? I said, sir, we're on our way to the Hummingbird Club and the artist is late. Who's the artist? Craig Ryder. The night nurse guy? I said, yes. Can I get an autograph from him? My wife loves that song. Okay, follow me. And there are so many other incidents, but they are Africa. Still told in Africa, oh Jesus. I took 130 people to an African Sunsplash store that was supposed to be done by Synergy. But they backed out at the last minute. And two weeks before I was appointed by the promoters to take it over. The first thing happened was the Minister of Health heard about it and called me into a meeting on Nwaraska Road. They said, we already going to Africa with over 100 people. I said, yeah. Well, you know, we don't want an epidemic here. I said, yeah. What? I said, my artists are well behaved. No, 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 no. We know what entertainers are and things. Where do you live? I give them the address, everything. How many people? How long you stay? When I went home the night, 10,000 condoms was on my bar veranda. So we know sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but in the reggae world, it pretty much was the same thing? Basically the same thing. He made enemies. There was a close call in one account dealing with Bob Marley's former manager, Don Taylor. Very sharp, you know, but he was sticky in many areas, and I was the either one brought it out to light to the point where my life was threatened. The same time when Bob dropped out and a man was sent to take me out at the Howard Johnson Hotel in Miami. And the man coming to me asking me for me. The man come to me and said, I try to find the tour manager for Jimmy Cliff, you know. And I said, why? And somebody I know from school days too, you know. And he said, Mr. Why? And tell me the story. We look nine ways, I said nine millimeter. Right? And I say, yeah. and when I'm done talk, I say, you know something? And me, you know, and jump back and say, then you the man tell me if you come now, because we're going to throw over it in the track and get him down the southwest, you know. And that's when I made my exit from that whole organization. Forbes making himself indispensable to many over many years. But what now? 
with the details published that might make some squirm. Will they still have that regard for you when this book hits the shelves? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Honest, honest. Some might not, but I'm gonna tell you and I'll say it plain to the world. I did not delve into nobody's private life. We didn't want to seem as if we were trying to discredit anybody because the aim of the book is to be didactic, to teach, and not to really dish on anyone. And so whenever I saw that tendency where it could be interpreted that we were actually getting into people's personal lives or anything like that, then I would caution uh, Copeland and say, I don't think we should go that way. So you played it safe, but Copeland, you wanted to tell the unvarnished story? Well, you know something? I knew, knowing this man, I know he's gonna say certain things, but it's, it's better I document it. Just as he said, he looked at certain things and said, let's not put that there, let's try it going to look like addition and people. But there were two facts. A lot of artists, who know they are guilty of some of them, as I really approached me and said, boy, well, you know, I know you're going to have that thing, but let me get a peep first and blah, blah, blah. When you signed the six, six very hard company for the same period, worldwide distribution, running simultaneously, and the next one don't know, and the next one don't know that one of them that come from a major company in, in Europe, the guy who gave us a connection got fired because they found out that the artist had many other contracts signed with five or six different labels. I mean, some people may not like some of the things they may because they don't want that part of them to be known. But I just tell the truth. If there is one takeaway you want people to have from this book, people know to have from this book, what would that takeaway be? Um, lots of lessons to learn and lots of errors that the, those before them made, they can avoid going down that same route so it makes it better for them. And the main thing is to have professional people in your team. Can you say, I don't want that artist because why well, have some people who them kick over this and kick over that. And I've seen it with these two eyes already. I say guns drawn backstage. I say knife. Man, I run the man with knife because of this kind of thing. So we need to surround ourselves with professional people and people who are just not walking in a briefcase and get 20% or 10% and to get a first class or a business class ticket. Reggae My Life Is by Copeland Forbes, as told by Clyde McKenzie, available at leading pharmacies and bookstores, also at Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble.